Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. I am sitting here on the Bay of Los Osos in the central coast of California. And I'm going to be looking at and exploring some dye plants that are found along the coastal range of this gorgeous state. Now today we don't have any sun. We actually have a beautiful marine layer that blankets this area often. But what it allows for is a lovely diversity of plants that are both arid, but also living from the coastal winds and weather that comes in from the Pacific coast. So as I've come down to this area, I've actually brought a book with me, and this is a book I've shown before, but it's called Natural Palettes. And it is a book by the incredible Sasha Durr, who is a amazing natural dye resource maven. She is a strong voice in the space and has been a great inspiration to me. And in this book, there is an entire chapter dedicated to California coastal dye plants. So I've selected a few on her list and I'm going to go about and see if I can't find some of these in my little town of Los Osos and bring them back to the dye pot. Now, in her book, Sasha Durr's book, she actually shows the results of these plants using different mordants. I'm going to stick with one mordant, and that is a soy milk mordant, which she actually doesn't use. But that's a good staple for me, so I will be looking at both cotton and silk, and we'll see what colors we get from the California coastline. So right out of the gate, I am sitting in ice plant. Ice plant is everywhere along the coastline here in California. It was brought here to help with erosion and unfortunately it is not native and therefore has completely taken over. It is definitely considered a weed and there's areas along the coastline that are trying to eradicate the ice plant. So it is actually a great source for dye because if you take some, you're not going to be upsetting the natural order of things, but rather helping to eliminate some of the ice plant along the coast. So I'm gonna take a few pieces from this space and go play with it. Now another invasive plant that was not native to California but now grows everywhere is the eucalyptus tree. So the bark peels away on its own and as you can see here this forest is filled with bark as well as leaves. But I absolutely love the way it looks when it has fallen away from the tree. I think it's really really 
stunning. I have gathered bark and leaves to test different colors out. There's so many different varieties of eucalyptus that you can have a wide variety of color. So I became curious walking through this eucalyptus grove because I kept seeing what looked like a kind of pine cone. And it turns out that it is a eucalyptus cone or seed pod. So I went ahead and gathered those up and I'm gonna see if those will also bring me a color in my dye pot. You can see the small nuts or seed pods that I found and decided to collect just a handful. And I bet you I'll get some kind of a beautiful neutral color out of these. Wow, there is a white egret. There are lots and lots of seabirds along this coastline. That is the Los Osos Bay. And I can't tell you how many beautiful birds I've seen while I've been here. So as I continue to walk through this area, I can't help but notice all of the evergreen. Now, California is known for some large evergreens like the sequoia or the redwood, but along this part of the coast, there are things like the Monterey pine and other kinds of spruce and cypress trees. So I'm collecting various cones that I see, a couple different shapes and sizes. I know pine cones and cones in general do produce a really beautiful color in your dye pot. So I'm gonna see what some of these local coastal evergreen trees are gonna bring. I have some right behind me here, lots of different varieties actually. So I'll be taking out my Picture This app, which is one that I use to help me identify things and make sure that I can at least hopefully get pretty close on what type of evergreen it is so that I know from the cones what I will be getting in my dye pot. All right, next on the list is something called the sticky monkey bush or plant. And I have seen it peppered along the coast and I just spotted some. So I'm gonna turn you around so you can see what it looks like. So this is the sticky monkey tree or bush. And as you can see, it has these incredible orange flowers. It is a great, option to put in your dye pot to thin it out along the coast and to use it within your natural dye practice.
right next to the sticky monkey is coastal sage. <laughs> I could smell it. It's just so amazing. Mm. Can't wait to put this in the dye pot, both for the color and for the scent. Coastal sage. Well, I know what my favorite one was, ice plant. I was actually blown away by the color and it reminded me of a few other dye materials that I have used in the past. One maybe from the quality of the leaves, similar to an aloe experience. And also it really reminded me of avocado stones and that beautiful pink color that came through. So that was an amazing surprise. And the best part is that it is everywhere along the coastline. So it is a great option for the dye pot, as I mentioned before. And it's a lot less expensive than avocados. The other thing that was very noticeable about these coastal plants is that they preferred protein fibers. So the silk took on the color stronger than the cotton did, even though the cotton has a protein overlay in the form of a soy milk mordant. I think if I were to do it again in the future with cellulose fibers like cotton, I might try a tannin alum a mixture for a mordant with the cotton that sometimes can boost how the color adheres in terms of the depth onto the textile itself. So what about the eucalyptus leaves that I collected? Well, I happen to have one right here in my hand. I decided to bring those back and that's where I am now in my forest near my home. And the reason for that is because I know that eucalyptus leaves can create really beautiful echo prints. And so next week on Color Quest, I'm going to collect local leaves here in the Pacific Northwest, as well as the eucalyptus leaves that I collected in California. And we're going to try something new, and that is an echo print. Would love to have you subscribe to the channel. There is new content every Friday here on Color Quest. So join us as we continue to explore the magic that is Mother Nature. I was walking through the I was walking through this I was walking through oh my god